Oh boy, this Sora costume looks awesome. I'm gonna go select it. Stop battle! Man, I hate this game. Alt stick forever to load. Training mode has no good options. Two Link's hit sounds are disgusting. World of Light is boring. And worst of all, Dark Pit holds a staff in his render even though he only uses it in his final smash. Okay, on a serious note, I don't hate this game. It's one of my favorite games of all time and it's changed my life for the better. But it's not perfect. Every game has flaws and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is no exception. Some are legitimate issues like how you can't play on hazardous stages in training mode for some reason and others are not that important. For example, Luigi's 8th alt has a differently colored L on his cap between the render and the actual model. Like, it's dumb, but it's not a big deal, you know? That said, it's still fun to complain about inconsequential stuff like that. Chalk's face was made really ugly in Ultimate compared to Smash 4, but that's not gonna stop me from either playing him or mentioning it. Anyways, I made a tweet on Twitter asking people what they don't like about this game, and let's just say I got a lot of replies. Like, uh, like a lot of replies. Originally I wanted to make a video where I just go over stuff I don't like, but people gave me a lot of interesting things I never even considered, so I'm just going to be focusing on that for now. Besides, most of the things they said, I agree with. Making this tweet and then having to read hundreds upon hundreds of replies took a long time, and honestly, kind of started hurting my eyes and giving me a headache. Luckily that was easily fixed by popping on some blue light blocking glasses from GMG Performance. After that I was able to read all that negativity no problem. I look at screens a lot in my day to day life, when I wake up I check my phone for an hour or so, then I get out of bed only to stare at my computer screen for 14 hours a day. If you're like me and you spend a lot of time in front of screens, be it from playing games, watching series or even working from home, you've undoubtedly experienced strained eyes because of too much device usage, and that's because screens emit something called blue light. This is exactly why a lot of devices have those night mode settings that give your screen a yellow tint, which helps but it does look pretty bad, and doesn't actually get rid of this blue light. That's why I've been a big fan of GMG Performance's glasses lately. They block blue light, without hindering my vision at all. Here's me actually wearing them on a livestream I did last month. They're seriously a big help to someone like me who already has pretty weak eyes. If you want to try these glasses out, now would be the perfect time. Because for the next 48 hours when this video is uploaded, you're having a big 40% discount. That's almost half off. So act fast and check out these amazing blue light blocking glasses with the special link at the top of the description. They have two different models to choose from, the other one looks slick as hell also, but as you can see I don't have a nose, so this is the model for me. Thanks again to GMG Performance for supporting my channel, and now let's get on with the video. So yeah, like I said, I'm mainly going to be covering the stuff people pointed out on that tweet of mine, so I'm going to be going through these rather quickly because there's a lot to talk about. Starting off with, every Pokemon not having their shiny form as an alt, which I completely agree with. For those who don't know, every Pokemon in existence already has a recolor in the form of an extremely rare, shiny form. And wouldn't you know it, Smash Bros. is a fighting game where characters always have multiple alternate costumes to swap between. And for some reason, out of the 10 playable Pokemon, only 2 of them have an actual shiny alt. Shiny Pikachu is just more orange instead of yellow. He has 2 alts where he becomes a slightly darker tint than normal, but definitely not shiny. Pichu doesn't change color at all in any alt, which honestly makes it pretty close to their shiny form because it barely changes anyways. Jigglypuff gets green eyes, which none of the alts give them. Lucario doesn't even have a yellow alt, which is what the shiny alt makes them. Greninja has this alt, which is painfully close to his shiny, but actual shiny Greninja doesn't have any yellow parts and has a red tongue instead of orange. Like, this alt is clearly inspired by his shiny, which is stupid. At that point, why not just literally give him his shiny form as an alt? Mewtwo's shiny just has a green tail and eyes. This alt is kinda close to it, but that's more yellow than green if you ask me. Also, shiny Mewtwo doesn't have a different skin color besides their tail, which this alt does. Incineroar actually does have its shiny, which, I mean, nice. It's pretty ugly, but cool that it's there. And then Pokemon Trainer is a weird case. Besides their default alt, obviously, all the costumes have a unified color between the three Pokemon. This one's white, this one's blue, it makes sense. But ironically, one of these actually is a shiny. Can you guess which one? Well, it's this one. Yellow Ivysaur. It might not be intentional, but that is 100% shiny Ivysaur. The bulb is yellow, the skin is yellow-greenish, the spots are darker, and the leaves remain green. Shiny Squirtle and Charizard aren't in the game though. With Squirtle I kinda understand it, it's just slightly lighter with a green shell, not that noticeable, especially from the front, but Charizard is honestly really stupid. Shiny Charizard is bar none the most famous shiny form of all time. It's a very drastic change and it's a black dragon with red wings. That's awesome. 
Again, it makes sense for there not to be some kind of shiny hunter costume since all the alts are supposed to have a unified color, but you can't deny that this as a concept is really neat. And again, it's really dumb that besides Incineroar, the other Pokemon don't have a simple shiny alt. Moving on from that, I don't like that after all these years we have no rematch option. Yeah, that would have been nice. People already don't like that after every match the character you last used doesn't get saved and you have to reselect them, and god forbid you use an alt, cause you're gonna have to wait for that to load all over again every single time. A good way to remedy this could have been a quick rematch option. Maybe on the results screen, if every player held down the X button for about 2 seconds, a new match on the same stage with the same rules, characters, and alts would start. I really don't have much more to add to this, it can be that hard to implement. I mean, Rifles of Aether has an instant restart button right in the pause menu, and I think it would save a lot of time in Smash, especially for players that don't play a lot of different characters. They changed Meta Knight's final Smash after they added Galaxia Darkness into an actual Kirby game. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Galaxia Darkness was Meta Knight's final Smash in Brawl and Smash 4. It didn't have an origin at all in the Kirby series and was completely made up for Smash. After Smash 4 released though, a Kirby game called Planet Robobot came out, featuring a mode where you play as Meta Knight, and in this mode you could actually perform his final smash from Brawl and Smash 4. It has the same name, he does the same thing, it's his final smash. So they made it an actual canonical move in the Kirby series. Neat. And then they gave him a completely new made up final smash in Ultimates, essentially undoing what they did in Robobot. Speaking of Kirby, a complaint I got a lot was that modern Kirby is barely represented, and also that almost all Kirby content comes from Superstar specifically, and this is just flat out true. Masahiro Sakurai, the creator of Smash Bros as a whole, also created the Kirby series, but he actually stopped working on Kirby games a long time ago, with Amazing Mirror being the last Kirby game he had any involvement with, which released in 2004. Most Kirby games that currently exist released after Sakurai left the series, and this leads some to believe Sakurai has a bias towards the games he worked on, and thus chooses to almost exclusively use content from those games in Smash. You might not believe this, but Kirby's Final Smash, King Dedede's Final Smash, the Squeak Squad remix from Brawl, and the last 12 seconds from the Boss Theme Medley remix, also from Brawl, are the only piece of Kirby representation that come from games that Sakurai didn't work on. Yeah, every single stage, Every item, every music remix besides the previously mentioned, and of course every character, originates from Sakurai developed Kirby games. Even the Mark's boss fight and unique gourmet race minigame in World of Light come from Superstar. There are of course some spirits and non-remixed music tracks in Ultimate that come from later Kirby games, but those are just PNGs and existing music tracks ported over. Not really anything to get excited about. Quite silly considering a lot of fan-favorite Kirby games are ones that came out after Sakurai left the series, like Return to Dreamland and the aforementioned Planet Robobot to name a couple. I absolutely hate how you aren't able to use the Switch's built-in screen capture and are instead forced to use the replay system. Ah, <sighs> yeah, tell me about it. This is weird. The Nintendo Switch has a built-in video capture feature, which lets you record up to 30 second clips and is really useful for sharing cool clips online. Some games don't support this feature, and Smash Ultimate is sadly one of those games. This forces you to use the replay system found in the game, and that itself comes with some flaws, such as not being able to get rid of this annoying menu entirely during the countdown, and it having no basic media player functions like fast forwarding at all. On top of that, it's just a lot more work if you want to share a cool clip online this way. This is effectively the reason why I stopped making character montages early into Smash Ultimate's life. I just didn't like using the replay feature in this game. Most of the Mario stages are level 1 of whatever game they're representing, so you end up with a lot of grassy plains and little variety. Not to mention there is no Bowser's Castle stage. Yeah, that is stupid. Super Mario is THE face of gaming, there's no denying that. Pokemon may make more money, but that's also anime, card games, and a bunch of other stuff. The Mario series has COUNTLESS games with an unreal amount of creativity in it if you look at the series as a whole. There's roads in space made of rainbows, an ancient forest literally inside the dream world, an entire kingdom made up of food, cooking utensils, and pink lava, and yet, out of the 18 Mario stages in Smash Bros, 13 of them are just the first or main area of the games they represent. Pretty much every single one of these stages' origin game has a way more visually interesting area in it. 3D Land could have been a sweets and cookies themed stage, Mushroom Kingdom U could have been a haunted poison swamp stage, Golden Plains could have been a golden airship high up in the clouds, and the list goes on. But instead we just get a bunch of grass. I get wanting to make the stages recognizable from their game of origin, but come on, look at this. These are all different stages. We don't need this many variations of the same idea. It's extra insulting that Smash Bros for 3DS had a Rainbow Road stage that didn't make it to Ultimate for no real reason at all. But thank god we got 3D Land, am I right? 
And yeah, there being no Bowser's Castle stage is weird. It's iconic even outside the main Mario series. And I mean, the Paper Mario stage has a transformation that makes it a Bowser's Castle area briefly. But again, that's only a third of the whole stage, which in its base form and Omega slash Battlefield forms is, you guessed it, a grassy plain. They need to make Fox cuter. Um, okay. I mean, I think he's pretty cute, I guess. <clears throat> Gray skill DDD still having a colored hammer. Ruins this otherwise perfect skin. Yes, thank you. I've been saying this for years now. King DDD has some pretty fantastic alts, at least in my opinion. However, while I think this one is a cool idea, I really do not like the execution. It's meant to be a reference to the monochromatic display of a Game Boy screen, which is where the Kirby series and DDD got its start. Like, that's a cool idea, and they gave the exact same alt to Kirby. But looking at these two alts next to each other like this... Yeah, there's a clear issue, and that's the fact that DDD's damn hammer isn't also a grayscale. It really couldn't have been that hard to also give him a grayscale hammer, right? I know that in the game's code, for most characters, they use the same exact model and textures for their weapons across all their alts, which is the case for DDD, but not for everyone, like Inkling. Their weapons change color per alt, so why not also for this one DDD alt? When Kirby pulls out his hammer, it also ruins the illusion, but there I really don't mind because he's not constantly holding it, unlike with DDD. I mean, it's right there in the render, fully colored and all. Where is Olimar's voice? Why is he mute? This, uh, I kind of disagree with this one. So Olimar actually speaks in the Pikmin games. When you switch to him in Pikmin 2, he says his name. He can make sounds when he gets hurt. And he actually fully talks in the cutscenes of Pikmin 3, albeit in a fictional language. <laughs> And yet, Olimar in Smash makes no sound whatsoever. And I think that's understandable because, well... Yeah, each Pikmin already makes noises. I think it would have been uh, very annoying to fight an Olimar and having to hear him scream while also having to hear every Pikmin he deploys yell, with almost every single attack. Here's a quick mock-up. Great Olimar impression, right? But yeah, I think that would have gotten very annoying very quickly. Oh, and if you're wondering, Alf also talks. How it's been three games and Ganondorf is still just a Captain Falcon Echo in disguise. Well, actually, it's been four games, and uh, I completely agree. But I've had a video brewing on why Zelda representation as a whole sucks in Smash, which this falls under, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save this discussion for the future. So, uh, subscribe to catch that video, eventually. Thanks. Only one Sonic remix. Criminal. Yeah, I fully agree. So the Sonic series only had one remix in Brawl, and there it made sense because he was insanely rushed and put into the game very late in the development. They probably didn't have time to make more. And then when he returned in Smash 4, he got zero new remixes. And again in Ultimate, he also got zero new remixes. Meaning that in all those years of Sonic being in Smash, there's still only one Sonic remix. The reason this is so baffling is because Sonic music is some of the most iconic and beloved video game music of all time. And I don't think anyone would disagree with that. You know, why does Mega Man, who's been in two Smash games, get 23 remixes, while Sonic, who's been in three Smash games, gets one remix? I'm not saying Mega Man music doesn't deserve it, but Sonic music deserves it more in my opinion, and yet he still only has one. Anyways, I cannot stand how characters like Dr. Mario and Isabelle are not considered Echo Fighters, but somehow Ken is. A lot of people complain about Echo Fighters actually, not necessarily on the concept itself, but how it was executed. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Echo Fighters are a mess. We have seven official ones, and I would personally argue only Krom and Lucina are well made as Echo Fighters. And then again, Lucina was a Smash 4 character. These two completely share the same moveset as their non-Echo counterpart, with only one exception, and yet they play completely differently. They're more so easy mode versions of Marth and Roy, and yet they aren't simply weaker copies of them that have no reason to be used or for the originals if you're good with them. Ken is a really well made character, but it's just weird to categorize him as the same thing as Daisy and Richter. Those two are literally the exact same as Peach and Simon, while Ken plays almost completely differently from Ryu. It's kind of an insult to say he's the same thing game design wise as Daisy honestly. Also I really don't see the point in Dark Samus personally, with Daisy and Richter you can make the argument that they have a wildly different personality, and that's why you would pick them. And while that's technically also true for Samus and Dark Samus, it's kind of hard to appreciate that in Smash when, uh, they don't talk. 
Samus doesn't talk and neither does Dark Samus. Yeah, she floats and stuff, but she plays the exact same and it's kinda lame. Especially considering she had completely different moves when she was an assist trophy back in Smash 4. But I don't want to stay on this topic for too long because honestly it could be a whole separate video, so let's just move on for now. They removed Smash 4 Omega Pirate Ship. Okay, you guys want to see something stupid? Here's Smash 4's Omega Pirate Ship, and here's Ultimate. Talk about a downgrade of the century, oh my god. I get that they made every Omega form the same exact shape in Ultimate, and I think that's a good change from Smash 4, but did they really have to neuter the charm of the stage on some of them? Omega Onnit is another example where I think the Smash 4 version looked better. Like, where's the drugstore sign, man? It's pretty interesting to see how many different things there are that people don't like about this game, but do you want to know what was by far, and I mean by far, the most common thing people complain about? Well, Sonic, of course. Like... Jeez, I get it. Well, you know what they say, nobody hates Sonic more than Sonic fans. I swear to god, if I have to see this image one more time in my Twitter mentions, I'm gonna lose my mind. Anything you can think of regarding Sonic and Ultimate, people don't like about it. The most common complaint being that he has no personality, which I agree with. I'm not a huge fan of Sonic games, but everyone knows what his defining character trait besides his speed is, that being his attitude. It's pretty much the main thing that set him apart from Mario back when he was introduced in the 90s. I mean, this image really says it all, doesn't it? Sonic had a, uh, a lot of issues in Brawl, but one thing they got right was his idle animation. He looks annoyed that you're not controlling him at the moment, which is the point. While he didn't invent it, the original Sonic the Hedgehog series was pretty much the first games to really introduce the concept of idle animations to the world. Everyone knows by now that if you don't do anything for a while in Sonic CD, he gets annoyed at you and jumps off screen, making you lose a life, very much reinforcing his cocky and short-tempered attitude. And I mean, they got this right the first time in Brawl, where he looks properly pissed off. Now look at Ultimate. He doesn't even look annoyed, he looks like he's just waiting for his 3 minute instant noodles to be done. And I mean, yeah, them removing the incredibly infamous You're too slow! taunt and replacing it with Sonic Speed! is dumb. I mean, it's a taunt. It's supposed to taunt the opponent. Saying Sonic Speed is more just a weak brag, I guess. Another thing people justifiably hate about Sonic and Smash is his moveset. I mean, ball, 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 ball. Those were all different moves. Even some of his animations are just balls. Forward roll, back roll, jump, double jump. I mean, those make sense, but you can't deny that if you're playing as Sonic, you're essentially playing as a blue sphere half of the match. The reason this is the case is because he was infamously very rushed in Raw, like I said earlier. So to save on development time, they just made most of his moves ball attacks. He had even more of them in Raw, believe it or not. That's not a good excuse at all for him to still have so many ball moves, though. Ultimate came out 10 years after Brawl, and there was even a game in between them. The fact that down special and forward special, you know, special moves are still essentially the same, is ridiculous. Make forward special a fire shield dash or something. The weak Sonic representation extends past the character by the way. In my opinion having only one playable character doesn't count as having bad representation, but this, this is bad representation. The two Sonic stages in Smash are Green Hill Zone and Windy Hill Zone. This is the same damn thing. Pretty much every Sonic game ever has Green Hill Zone, or a variation of Green Hill Zone, as the first stage. The opening level of Sonic Lost World is Windy Hill Zone, aka that game's version of Green Hill Zone. Why, that's perfect for Sonic's second Smash stage, wouldn't you say? Look, I'm just as sick of seeing Chemical Plant Zone in Sonic games as the next guy, but you can't deny that it would have been a way better fit as Sonic's second Smash stage than just Green Hill Zone 2. It's essentially the same problem as I described the Mario stages having earlier. People also just don't like how he looks, but that extends to the rest of Smash Ultimate if you ask me. Visually speaking, I think Smash 4 is a way better looking game than Ultimate. I mean, look at the lighting differences between the two games' Battlefield stage, or a female Robin's facial expression in this victory screen, or the color yellow in general. It's so washed out. But that's a conversation for another day. There are lots, and I mean lots of other replies I got that I'd love to talk about, but I really didn't want this video to get super long, so maybe if people like this kind of video enough, I can do a part 2 later down the line. Let me know in the comments if you'd like that. Or if you don't care, let me know what you don't like about the game. Like I said, I love this game, but damn it's got a lot of small things to complain about. I mean, I kinda already did that twice. 
Big shoutouts to Right the Yoshi, Gorka, Giant Fire and Cole, Quote is Cool, The Game DD, Lurifax One, Sheen for the Win, Sylphion 700, Super Pig X, Lime the Chef, Milk and Frogs, The Flying Fire, Noso, and the rest of my awesome Patreon supporters. Fun fact, these people already know what's to come in the near future for my channel, so if you'd also like that info, you know where to go. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a splendid day. Bye bye. Thank you.